All right, are we ready for a critique? I've got five websites that I'm gonna provide feedback to, so hopefully they can incorporate and improve their own websites, and maybe there might be some tips in there that are gonna help you in improving your photography website. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon, welcome to my studio. Like I said, we are doing a critique here today of photography websites. I sent out an email to our subscriber list. This has been a while back, but I said, hey, anybody who's interested in getting critiques, send me your website. And holy moly, like I knew I'd get quite a few, but I did not realize I would get 300. <laughs> so obviously can't go through all 300. Picked five at random to provide some feedback. I have not gone through these. So this is kind of like little live react situation. Just my hot takes on what are things that these folks can do to improve their websites and hopefully improve their chances of getting hired, landing new clients. So let's hop into the very first one. I've got the Rose Food Photography. Love this shot here. Definitely food is coming through. We know you, you specialize in very clearly demonstrating the skills. And then we're jumping immediately into an about me. I always love a really strong about me section on a website. It's really important because when somebody lands on your website, what sets you apart from all the other food photographers out there? Well, it's uniquely who you are and a little bit of your story. And what I love here is that they are starting with a question. This is some really strong copy right out the gate. What came first, the camera or the chef's hat? It's a great great question, right? And I would say, oh, I actually really identify with that personally. But I'm loving the bit of storytelling here in the about me section. One question I would have, I'm not necessarily like team emoji or team anti emoji. For sure, when it comes to social medias, I'm pro emoji within reason, I'd say be careful. But from a professionalism standpoint, I would say if this is on brand for you, if this is going to appeal to your target clientele to have an emoji in the copy of your about me, if like also here on the homepage, then totally cool, but I would just make sure that that is properly aligned because really when we are thinking about composing your website, making creative decisions, it all comes back to who are you targeting? Like is your target clientele super playful, using emojis, kind of fun, not taking themselves too seriously, or are you trying to appeal to more professional agencies or folks who are maybe a little bit more buttoned up? You want to make sure that there is proper alignment. And so that's why before you get into even working on your website, or maybe if you have a website and it's time to brush it up a little bit is to spend some time exploring your unique value proposition. And so if you have a good sense of who you are and who you're looking to serve and the needs that they have, then that's gonna ring true in the copy and all the creative decisions that you're making on your website. So again, I didn't mean to go into like a whole rabbit hole there with the emoji, but it's just something that made me pause and go, if that's aligned with your target clientele, definitely keep it. If it's not, maybe worth rethinking. Now, one thing too that I'm noticing here is we've kind of gone into this storytelling, but I'm not really even sure who you are because we have the Rose food photography, but I'm like, who's the Rose? Is that your last name? Is that your first name? And so what I would do is right up here because I see a little further down, you say, oh, my name's Laura. Awesome, Laura. I would have right up here something like, hi, I'm Laura, and then a photo of you. I really emphasize the importance of having a visible photo, some sort of headshot, again, thinking in line with who's your target clientele, who are you looking to reach and serve, and what would be an image that would appeal to them, and something that's theoretically friendly, somebody they'd want to do business with. But that really helps to connect the story because this is quite a bit of copy, right? Like we've got white background, black text, emoji, but other other than that, I would love to see like, who is this person? Because we are kind of starting off with a little bit of a mystery here. So one little tweak there. And then scrolling down, we have this fun GIF and that lands us then down here at the bottom. Love this, that you've got your newsletter sign up. That is a great thing to have here on your website. And then those social icons. You may also consider something that is really helpful, and I would say it's probably something I will also reiterate as we go through other websites, is the importance of making sure your contact information is readily available and easy to find. So this is giving somebody an ability to subscribe to a newsletter, and we see your social icons. I would just add right down here like your actual email address so that somebody can get in touch, because if they get to the bottom of this and they're like, we're in love with Laura, we love this GIF for the stop motion, we've like, we're ready to go we don't want to delay or make it difficult for them to reach out. So that would be the only critique there. But otherwise, let's hop in to the portfolio. All right, so I took a blitz through the portfolio here. And what I'm noticing is sort of like these 
broken out sections where you've got it sort of like here's this vignette of these images that go together from the same shoot and then we've got some copy interspersed and kind of that same idea here again something slightly different and then we've got a bit more variety in the different images that are below and what i'd say is it feels a little disjointed in the sense of kind of this breaking it up with this copy in between it doesn't quite flow to me. It's sort of like, oh, and I get it. Like, I love the call to action. <laughs> so I don't hate that. I would say it's something to sort of reconsider because uh, honestly, when it comes to a portfolio, and maybe some of this is my bias, this has got me kind of thinking like, you know, I've operated under the assumption of like what a portfolio page should look like, which is clean, simple, minimal distractions. In terms of the images, there should be a similar note that runs throughout that sort of connects the story throughout all of them, but in a visual variety to keep it exciting. There definitely feels like there's a lot of different variety here once we scroll down. But if I didn't scroll, because that is also, you know, you think of the people who we are connecting with, our potential clients, they're busy people. So they may not go all the way down. So if all they see is this section and this section, and they're like, oh, okay, so this person shoots, you know, primarily in this gray, bluish background. And this is kind of all like these images. I love all these images, but they are all very similar. They're not demonstrating anything super uniquely different. Like I would pick the top one out of this group, maybe two. Like I do like kind of the action shots, but like this shot, this shot, and this shot to me are all that they're all kind of the same, right? Like they're a little jar with an action and a spoon going on. And so I would pick the top strongest one out of that, you know, and this is kind of very similar to that. This is similar to that. So you could narrow this collection down to two or three and same going for this like this this and this all kind of telling the same skill story concept I would simplify that and then get into the larger body of work which feels like it's further down if that makes sense you definitely have some though that also feel like kind of dissimilar to what else is here right like this is a bit more traditional food photography whereas these kind of more fun and playful and seamless definitely feel a little unique so the idea of how to incorporate those you know this is where we start to think about do you separate these out into a separate gallery because these images would they apply to first of all your target clientele it's always the question we come back to but do these images also connect to the kind of client like the kind of client that wants these images is that same client want these images so thinking about your gallery in terms of that question so then continuing to scroll down again we've got some images that I feel like there is a lot of similarity they're not necessarily demonstrating something unique and when we think about somebody's going through images when we feel like we're getting the same thing we tend to get bored right and we don't want our viewers to be bored so like of these three images all great images but which one to you is the strongest me in particular this one feels the strongest and most interesting so I would probably do away with those two so I think you can kind of curate this gallery a bit more to really strengthen it because like again these three images they're all great they all kind of feel the same so for anything that has a similarity I would go back and say, which one's the strongest? And then bring all those into being a singular gallery that's continuous. But that is always the hard part of creating an online portfolio or portfolio of any type is sort of striking that balance of not having too few photos, but then not too many photos that it gets monotonous and having enough visual variety that's exciting and interesting, but not so wildly disparate that it feels disjointed. So again, I know you're like, wait, Joni, do I want them similar or do I not? But also it always comes back to who is your target client? Are these the kinds of images that your target client would desire and would be excited to hire you for? Then you're definitely on the right track. And then we've got all important contact information. We've got a contact form here, which is helpful. Ah, and great job. You've got your email address here. We also have that location. That's really helpful for clients to know like physically where you located, even if they are interested in working with you remotely, just having a sense of like physically where you based is helpful. And that in addition to a contact form that you also have that email address available. And then our packages page. Now this is something that I do not include a packages page on my website. There are plenty of different schools of thought as it relates to advertising the services that you offer, how you package it. Again, much of this informs 
informed by the kind of work that you do, the kinds of clients that you're working with. But one thing that I would caution against is advertising. Um, first of all, I would say for a half day rate, you can definitely increase this based on the skill set that I've seen demonstrated in your portfolio. We can definitely increase that. But the other thing that I would say is that advertising any sort of numbers or rates on your website as a commercial photographer is not going to be in your best interest generally. It does make sense, I think, sometimes for, you know, consumer photographers, people who are shooting for families or people for personal use, weddings, personal portraits, things like that. But when we come to commercial work, especially in the category of food photography, every project is custom. As much as we would love to say, like, oh, I have these sort of standard offerings, there's always going to be deviations. And you would never want somebody to come in here and say, oh, OK, great. A package starts at $500. Well, that's well within my range. But then once you actually do the numbers of, well, maybe it's only a half day of shooting, right? But what about all your pre-production time and your post-production and editing time? And then what about all the props and surfaces and the gear and all these other things that start to add up? Food, and if you need a stylist, like something that they have in their mind, $500, and then suddenly you're putting together an estimate that's $3,500, well, they're not going to take that leap with you. They're going to go, but I had $500 in my mind. So I would really shy away from sharing any sort of numbers with anybody until you've had a conversation. Sales psychology is something I'm so incredibly passionate about. So let me know if you want me to share more about sales on this channel. I know that photography has been the focus of this channel, but sales skills are something I'm so incredibly passionate about. So if you want to hear more about that, let me know in the comments below. And then the blog looks like you've got a blog going here that's great you know i know some folks really love search engine optimization admittedly that is not an area of expertise or skills that i bring to the table so i'm not going to weigh in on that but clearly seeing that there is content being produced and published that this is not something that was just like we posted one blog post and then never did again this demonstrates that you are actively doing that so that's awesome i may try to like if there's an ability again i know website themes are a unique and tricky thing but if there's an ability to incorporate some images here, I definitely would because again, it's photography and we want to see the food photography and your skills demonstrated to help back up this content. Let me just click into one of them. Maybe there are images there. Oh, cool. Yep. Nice. So yeah, I would just see if you could get here on this blog landing page, some sort of images incorporated. Thank you so much, Laura, for submitting your website. Hope that was helpful. Hope that helps some of the folks out here. But now let's jump into the second website. All right. So we have Roberto SK from Corinaldo. Am I saying this right? I Let's see. Well, I'm going to jump to who I am, see if it has where you're located, because I would love to know <laughs> where you're based. Uh, you do food photography. Where are you located? So that's one little thing that I would go ahead and incorporate here, but love that we've got a photo of you. Love a little explanation as to the use of the name SK, where that comes from. Then I can see you've got your phone number here, which is something that a lot of industry folks do recommend having your phone number on your website. I would say this is all a matter of like personal comfort. I know for me, I don't feel great about having my phone number <laughs> plastered all over the internet, but I would say for anybody who is comfortable, just providing one additional easy way for somebody to get a hold of you. Because you can also think about it from the perspective of the different kinds of clients we're serving that some folks would prefer a phone call some folks would prefer email like everybody's got their different preferred methods of communication again some of this does go back to the kinds of clients that you're serving by having a number of different ways for somebody to get a hold of you is always a good thing because you don't want to lose an opportunity simply because somebody doesn't have an ability to get a hold of you I would say I would love to see here too just your quick email address so that that is additionally included Included for anybody who'd prefer to reach out via email. All right, but I jumped ahead because I was so curious about where you were from, <laughs> which I have not confirmed. Let's see though. Love the continuity of the images here. I also love that right here on the homepage, we are jumping directly into images that we don't have to go anywhere. We don't have to click through anything. That is definitely something that's recommended is the fewer clicks, the better when it comes to accessing the images and the information that your prospective clients are looking for. Like more clicks, more complexity is never a good thing. I've definitely seen lots of photographers out there overthink their websites, adding unnecessary complication in the interest of making things exciting, but we're not going for exciting. We're looking for functional, and this is very functional. Also love that there is a very strong visual connection throughout all of these. Also that you've got some motion incorporated and that it's automatic. 
I definitely know some folks are gonna be asking what theme you're using. I believe that format has the automatic playing GIFs. That's a question that comes up from time to time. Ooh, love this, love this. Definitely a very strong portfolio, very cohesive. Mm, not, <laughs> this one makes me uncomfortable. I'm like, oh, feet pics in a food portfolio. I mean, love that that's memorable though. Maybe some folks, I don't, I don't know. That's, that's a fun, edgy photo. And I would say like, clearly there is an edge to your work. So I would say again, if that appeals to your target clientele, you are right on cue. I would love some of the story here though. I'm like, we've got whiskey, toes, and potato chips. Like I need, what is the story going on there? That is a good one. <laughs> okay. So excellent work though with the images right out the get go. Let's see contacts. Oh, excellent. There's your email address, phone number in Milan. Okay, I went to the wrong, see, I went to the who am I? And see, this is to where it is interesting, you know, for anybody who's got a website, put it in the hands of somebody else and have them drive it. Because when we are creating our own websites, like we have our own thoughts as to how we think somebody's gonna use it. But when I was like, ooh, where's Roberto from? I went to the who am I first. I should have gone to the contacts first because then that gave me the information that you are in Milan, that you're available all over Italy, which is wonderful. I would just in case there's anybody who's goobers like me who head over to the who I am first, I would just add that information over there. Or you could potentially combine them as well. That's another idea. But this, love this with the pasta. Very, very, I love this. All right, so now photo, let's see. Okay, I can't click that. Let's see, colors. Oh, okay, so we, this is where we've got our various different galleries. So the tricky part is with the galleries, you know, some folks sort of come at it, I've seen lots of photographers over the years go, okay, well, I need multiple galleries because I've seen other photographers have multiple galleries. Nowhere is it written that you have to have multiple galleries. I myself have my stills gallery and my video gallery, like because those do kind of target two different kinds of clientels that I use there. And it always comes back to that, that target client. Who are we focused? Who are we trying to reach? and how do we make it easy for them to find what they're looking for? And so when you say colors, this is, I would maybe rethink the title of this because it's a little like, what is colors, right? Like clearly it's the, the seamless colorful. So maybe I understand that it may be hard to think through. Maybe this is more product, although it's not really product, but I would say, Maybe you could call it seamless. That's something worth rethinking. But at the end of the day, I clicked it. I got it. It makes sense. At the table. Gotcha. So this is more of our editorial food photography. I can see that this gallery was a bit longer. Was it? Yeah, it was. This is the longest gallery. I can see too, this is where your area of expertise and passion is. So yeah, maybe rethink the name colors. I don't have a better answer for you as to what to name it right now. I'll probably think of it at like two in the morning and then I'll email you. If anybody else has a recommendation what to title that, let us know in the comments. At the table, that makes sense. You could also just call this editorial or food. That would be another option. Strong work though, good visual variety. Let's see, motion, nice. That's pretty clearly self-explanatory. Now, one thing that's interesting is, and something to think about, is these are now all images that I have seen before because they were all in that primary homepage. And one thing to think about is not having repetition. Like if you've got an image on your website, it should only live in one site. It shouldn't be in multiple. And so revisiting the step now, I don't remember seeing this one. So some of these though that do, like this one I loved, that's why I remembered it, also lives on the homepage. You might wanna consider where is it gonna live? Is this a homepager or is this something that goes in that sub gallery? Again, this also then begets like how much more content you need to produce for your portfolio, which is always, again, a work in progress. Looks great. Let's see, moody. So this is where we got some drama. So now here's the question though, is, is this targeting different clientele, right? Because do we have a client who's like at the table and moody? Do like, can we combine those into one? Is there a reason to separate it out? I'm not saying that there's not, but if the same client wants to see all those images in the same place without clicking, something to consider maybe consolidating those together because I definitely think these are images that would go well in those other galleries as opposed to being broken out on their own. As opposed to like, if you have clients who are specifically like these, I'm going after the moody clients, like these are moody clients. And so they only wanna see that work then that's great too. So again, just thinking through what's gonna be the best from the user perspective. And then projects, very nice. Oh, okay, so now I see there's a foot thing. <laughs> there's a foot thing going on here, got it. Of course, now I'm curious. Let's see. You did a whole thing of feet in food. 
but good for you. I love that. <laughs> These are fun. I really like this idea of all these individual unique vignettes. This can also be helpful too. I think about for anybody who is targeting clients and you're like, oh, I see that there's an opportunity to do something similar like we did for this client or for this project and sort of giving that bigger vision as opposed to individual images in a gallery, kind of that larger perspective of an opportunity to tell a story. And so this is very, very cool as well. So let's see, oh, case studies, case studies. Now these case studies are awesome. I I'm wondering if there's an ability to consolidate case studies with projects because I'm not really seeing the full difference between them. I would say those could be combined into one to make that a little less confusing as to which is which and just to make it a stronger case overall. Because when I go to case studies and this is just a lot of words that doesn't necessarily engage me in the same way, I can see that the images do change, which is cool. But yeah, I would probably just consider consolidating that and maybe bringing those projects into the case studies. Just an idea there. And we already saw the who I am. We know who you are. There's the Instagrams. SK, this is a fantastic website, clearly demonstrates a lot of skill and ability. I'm sure your clients are thrilled to get to work with you and the future clients that you're going to work with are lucky to have you. But thank you so much for sharing your website. Some really good stuff here. Moving into website numero tres. All right, the lime blue photography. Claire, let me make sure I'm on the homepage. There we go. Lime blue photography. Love that we've got some images straight out the gate. Now I've got, you know, here's the thing with these like scrolly ones. I'm not sure I love these. I want it like if somebody wanted to blitz through, this is something that I've talked with other folks about and some clients that there is sort of this delayed access and sometimes too these buttons don't work. So again, I would run this past other people. Not sure how much flexibility you've got, but these like sort of like where you have to push the button to scroll, uh, I get a little dicey on those. <laughs> but do love that this is clean and simple and straightforward. Let's go ahead and jump into the portfolio here. Very nice. I like the size of the images. I think you could potentially, you know, there's always sort of like, there's not one set answer of the right or wrong in terms of image size. It is really nice to be able to see the image large so that we can really get into it. What's interesting though, is that it's larger in the gallery as opposed to the breakout. One of the things that's nice in a larger gallery like this is to be able to quickly scroll and get a sense of the overall work. And then if somebody wants to enlarge the image and break it out and open it, that they could click into it. So that's not quite functioning to that degree here. So yeah, the, again, I'm not saying that this size is bad. I've seen this work and certainly this, you know, we can see your beautiful work. This is very strong imagery too. I just want to say that. Like, I love the lighting. I love the styling is very strong. It's very cohesive, connected, feels very classic, modern, um, a bit of like homespun without being overly precious. Definitely get kind of a healthy vibrancy, vitality, a little bit of potential restaurants action here or other food products. Definitely, oh yeah, definitely feel some restaurant vibes here. But what I would say is, yeah, maybe considering playing around with that theme if there's an ability to get three across as opposed to two across. And then if when we click into that, that enlarges it, that would be nice. The, wow, what a gorgeous image. I love this. Where do I find this background? I love that background. <laughs> Stunning. Got some really solid props here as well. All right, now let's try out this. Let's chat. Oh, interesting. A little live messenger. I'm assuming this goes to your inbox and that it has the ability to communicate. This is interesting. I'd be curious to know what clients would think of this. Is this something they would use? Is this something they would not use? I'm just curious about that. I have no, I have no data <laughs> to go. Oh, oh, what happened? Here we go. Oh, I zoomed in. Okay. Joni's getting wild with the trackpad. One thing to consider is we kind of hit this dead end here at the bottom. We've got the let's chat. I am suspicious about how much prospective clients would use that. I would have some sort of bottom like footer navigation here with contact information or ways to navigate elsewhere throughout the website. When it comes to websites in general, it's great to not land somebody into a dead end because now now, if I want to go anywhere else on the website, I'm going to go all the way back, which I can do. I, I can totally do that. But we just, again, thinking about our prospective clients, their time, their busy people, they may bail before continuing on. Because two, now I'm like, oh, where's all my other navigation? Now I got to click back in to go to other places in the website. So I'm not sure if there's an ability to pull through this header into the actual gallery, because it would be really nice to be able to click over there as opposed to have to go back and then reorient over 
into your other galleries. All right, and so about, my name's Claire, love that. Now here's my little soapbox on the about is I know so many photographers, I've talked about this before, so apologies if you've heard me talk about this before, but so many photographers love to be behind the camera. Obviously, present company loves to be in front of the camera. That's a whole other conversation for another day. A lot of photographers will hide behind the camera. And so Claire, I can get a little whisper of your face, but I can't see your full face. So I am lacking sort of that connection. There feels like this disconnect and this divide, whereas this is a wonderful opportunity to connect with and be memorable to your prospective client that suddenly they, you know, they've got your story. She's a mom of three children. She's got this photography business, but we can't see your face and we can't connect with you in the eyes. So I would revisit, reevaluate the use of this image and stick with something that we can see your face. Now it could be something with, you know, again, with your kids or your family, it could be, it doesn't have to necessarily be like professional headshot, right? Like it doesn't necessarily have to be like full out LinkedIn situation. It can be something relatable and more natural, but I would say, let's get the camera out of your face so we can see your face. And then contact information, get in touch, wonderful phone number, email address, love all this. I can see now you're in New Zealand. Did you say that in the about? That may be something. That's an opportunity just to include that information there. Oh, location, location. Oh, there we go. I don't think you need this. I think you can consolidate this and get the point across uh, just to have that in either the contact or the about section as opposed to having, because this is this is otherwise unnecessary in, in my humble opinion. So <laughs> otherwise then we've got your blog, looks like food blog, awesome. Very cool to connect that there. Is there a way to link back to your other website? I would say that's an opportunity from the blog perspective, making sure that somebody from the blog, if they land there, can come back to your other website. And then log in. Ooh, maybe you have some sort of membership thing going on. Okay, very cool. If you don't have a membership thing going on, I would make sure to take that away. Otherwise, love your images, love your work, very strong demonstration of skills. Just a couple little tweaks to really set this up a notch, but I really appreciate you for sharing it, Claire. All right, moving on to number four. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Let's keep on trekking. <laughs> okay, Jellyscape Studios. This website definitely feels fun and playful, like right out the gate, use of the image the logo, the colors. So I'm going to assume that aligns with the kinds of clients that you want to work with, which I have to assume here again, playful, fun. Let's see. So this is going to be some similar feedback to the previous website where it was sort of thinking through having enough similarity for things to feel connected, but not having too much repetition that somebody would get bored. Because I would say both of these very strong images, both of these already like straight out the gate feel aligned with what I'm assuming is your target clientele, but they all do, they're all very similar, right? Like we're not really demonstrating anything unique, especially thinking again, if somebody doesn't scroll. Now what's the potential that somebody's not gonna scroll? That's pretty minimal, right? Like we're, we're gonna be optimistic that they're gonna scroll. But what if they didn't? What would they get straight out the gate? Well, we would think you are all about exclusively this product line, as opposed to having maybe something that's a different product or a different, like something that's similar, but something that's different here. So maybe pulling one of these images up. Ooh, I love this, very strong. Like you could pull this one up to the top, right? So that that complements like you've got sort of that bright colorful sort of feel, um, but something unique and different. So again, two, like I would pick one or the other, not both, right? Because they're very, they're different, but not different enough. Love that peanut butter though. Look at that, look at that sparkle. Ooh, look at those sparkles. <laughs> So same feedback for those images as well. And maybe some of this too is that you are still growing your portfolio. There's plenty of folks who go, well, I haven't, you know, I've only been at this a certain amount of time, not saying that's you, but certainly, you know, for anybody who's like, oh, Joni, I only have so many photos and a lot of them are from similar photo shoots. Great, like great place to get started. But now you know what your homework is. You know what your next personal assignment is, is how do we add more to this portfolio? So we've got just a little bit more diversity in the images so that it looks like it's maybe 10 different photo shoots as a four as opposed to four different photo shoots. Okay, Jellyscape Studios, portfolio. So that is the portfolio. Love that we've got the work with me right out here at the top. Very clear call to action. Love that we're making that easy for folks. Let's see what the bottom, ooh, bottom navigation opportunity as well to have an easier way to get a hold of you, your contact info, client projects. Okay, great. So now here's the thing. 
we've now seen all these images over in the portfolio. So I'm gonna assume maybe you've just got a limited portfolio. Otherwise I would have this different, right? So you may not need necessarily the client projects at this point because they are the same as what we've already seen. There's a bit more here. But now this is all definitely feeling a bit more repetitious. I would not include the entire gallery that you've delivered to a client if like these two images fairly similar, right? Like they are different and they are different, but I would simplify that. And I think for now, I would just stick with the primary portfolio as opposed to the client projects because this doesn't feel like a ton of client projects at this point. This is kind of telling me this is a limited number of clients that are going on. And so until there is a bit more there and until again, this is also different than what we're seeing in the portfolio because otherwise we're just seeing the same thing over again. All right, so coming into the about, I would swip swap these. I would make the personal connection first and then the general what we do second because right here, this does feel a bit like, uh, my, the question I always ask when we're talking about copy on an about page is how is this any different than any other photographer out there, right? So product photography services, great. Like again, love the name, the title of the studio. That's awesome. Emphasis the magic of your brand, ideation, styling, photography. This is all good. I would say if there's a little bit more of maybe storytelling or something that's unique to you that just is sort of a memorable differentiator, because otherwise this could probably be said for a lot of other photography studios. But you know what can't be said for a lot of photography studios? you. And I love this photo of you. I think this is an excellent selection. Again, it feels very connected and cohesive. Like to me, from the standpoint of having a target clientele, your website is incredibly strong in what I am imagining is your target client. Like I'm thinking Magic Spoon. I'm thinking some of these other brands that are more playful and fun and graphic and vibey and younger. Definitely like I'm getting that sense. This image works well with that. This little story right here. Love this. I would just swip swap these because you are more memorable than that. <laughs> and then I would look for also another different image because again, we've now seen this image three times. It's a wonderful image, so I don't want to downplay it at all, but once is plenty. That is that. And then contact information. What happens if I say get a quote? Oh, cool. So here's my other, oh, you ready for this one? <laughs> So I get a little nervous around contact forms. I've gone on some little soapboxes and I'm sure there's plenty of people who are gonna show up in the comment section and are gonna wanna fight me on this. I'm not a huge fan of a lengthy, what this to me feels lengthy. If I am a prospective client, and the reason that I know this is that I have hired creative professionals, copywriters, web designers, graphic designers, and been interfaced and forced into contact forms like this that have a lot of questions and a lot to fill out. And I go, I got enough on my plate. I don't want to fill out your form. I just want to get on a phone call with you. I want to talk with you. Now, maybe I'm old school. Maybe that's the way I roll. There's plenty of clients who may look at this and go, oh, this is great. This is totally what I want to do. And if that is going to be your target client and that's what they love, then great. If you have done your market research on that for the kinds of clients that you're looking to serve and this works well for them, do not let me talk you out of this. But I would say there's plenty of clients out there that may be like me who are like, I, I don't want, I just want to get on a phone call with you. I want to talk through it and I want you to do the work for me, right? Because that's when I'm going to hire you because I don't have the time for this. <laughs> so that is just my two cents on contact forms. Again, if you have a really compelling, strong reason for this, but to me, this is just creating a barrier of opportunity to furthering the sales process. Oh, interesting. Oh, wait, how does this work? Contact. Okay. This is diff so okay. So here's a question then. This is something to figure out because this functions differently than this. So I would pick one or the other. This is not bad, right? This I can totally hang with this. The longer get a quote one, I'm not the biggest fan of. But what I would also say too is make sure to have your, because I'm, do you see I'm scrolling up and down because I'm looking for an email address. Even if you have a contact form, still have an email address because maybe, again, you're dealing with a client on the other side who is a Joni Simon who is like, I don't want to fill out forms. I don't trust forms. I've heard that from prospective clients before too, as they're like, I don't trust forms are actually going to go to where they're supposed to go to. I just want to email somebody. Having that email address is just sort of like your fail safe in those situations. Again, making it as easy 
easy as possible for your prospective client to get in touch with you. But again, Sydney, I just love the vibe of your business. I think that you've got such a strong foundation here. I think there's some tweaks and opportunities, but your clients, they are so lucky to have you. All right, and last but not least, I'm glad that we're here at the last one because I have to turn the air conditioning off when I do these video recordings because it's too loud. It's starting to get a little toasty in here. <laughs> it's almost summer in Arizona and I'm feeling the heat. Am I turning red yet? All right, so we have Zenry Photography. I am loving this logo. I love this sort of feel. Again, I would ask the question of, is that aligned with the target clientele that you're seeking? But I definitely love the vibe and the feel. It gives me a feeling there, which I think is something when we consider logos and colors and design choices, it all comes back to like, what's the story it's telling me? Like there's kind of this homemade, a little graphic, a little edgy, playful that I'm getting from that. So I love it. All right, Southern California, love that we know where you're from right out the gate. Same feedback though, I would have right here, you know, we're right here on the homepage, dead center. And if I don't scroll, what do I see? I see the same product three times. So I would change these up, pick the strongest. This to me is the, these I would, X these. They're cool, but I would say these are a bit stronger in terms of traditional product photography. And you've got some really strong work down here. Like love these t-shirt photos. I would pull some of these up because I would say these are not your strongest in the bunch. We always think about a gallery from the standpoint of start strong and end strong. So, and it fit, it's sometimes too, it's really hard to get a sense from our own work. Like what is the strongest of my own images? If you're having a hard time with that, like go find some friends, go share your images with some other people and get their feedback like which ones do they think are keepers which ones are they going to get rid of and then start with the strongest and end with the strongest just like a good book right you want to hook them and then you want to send them off on a happy note loving the color palette here definitely this all feels cohesive very strong product photography I would have contact information, email address, maybe down here just next to this. I know that sometimes websites, it is a little challenging with the themes and things like that. But if there's an ability to do that, let's see. Oh, we've got food. So that was things and food. If we're at Zenry Photography, okay. So it starts with the thing. So I'm assuming if your homepage is the product, that the product is your focus. If that is not the case, then maybe rethink then the food. Same with this. So same feedback as the previous gallery. These are interesting, but I would say like an empty bowl is not necessarily telling me food photography or a knife. I would say actually the knife, I would put that in things. Cause yeah, you've definitely got some stronger food related images here like really love this fun colors uh definitely appealing like this could go higher Ooh, that's look at that gorgeous little moment i love i love lighting on the <laughs> on the liquid Ooh, it just sends me so yeah i would reprioritize uh this is I like this, like part of me is like, oh, I love beautiful linen. Does this appeal to your target clientele? Maybe this is something that goes into things or maybe this is one that we say, this is fun, but this is not necessarily something that speaks to my target client. Again, I don't know who your target client is. Take that all with a grain of salt. Yep, I would just reprioritize some of those food images. Oh, this is interesting though. We get into kind of more of a colorful, playful. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, I would just start on a stronger note here in the food gallery. Let's see, travel. Got two Iceland. Okay, so the question I would ask, these are, I love these, this is beautiful. Um, my question is from a travel perspective, are you getting hired for travel work? Um, and if so, do we need to just consolidate travel into one gallery as opposed to two of Iceland and one of Portland? Because the way that this reads to me, and I could be way off base, feel free to tell me I'm off base. That's the hard part about doing these critiques without you physically being here with me to have the conversation is I'm not entirely sure of the context. So I am just going off gut reaction. To me, this reads more like these are sort of personal images that you're proud of and that you like, but isn't necessarily the work you're getting hired for. Is that accurate? Because these, I mean, these are definitely strong images that I could see being any sort of travel magazine, seeing you getting hired. I mean, this is stunning, right? Like talk about it, talk about a vibe. But what I would say is, does this, like, if you're really going to be getting into being hired for travel photography, then you'd probably want a larger collection of single images as opposed to, you know, these three different galleries, two being Iceland, one being Portland. It just kind of feels maybe cut short. It feels a little disjointed to me. It makes me ask questions that I don't have answers for. So, <laughs> and then about 
Sami Zenry is a photographer. Love that. So here's a little question too that's in my mind. I think this also comes back to who's your target clientele is writing in the third person. It is for the most part, unless you are, I would say a celebrity or a public figure, for the most part, most people know that you've written your own website. And so to talk in the third person sometimes feels a little, I don't know, disjointed. And two, for me, I would rather write in the first person. So instead of saying, Asami Zenri is a photographer, a wife, I would say, I am a photographer, a wife, a cat lover, enthusiastic cook. Because two, then it's like you're having a conversation directly with the person who's reading this, right? As opposed to being sort of this third party, separate, disconnected. Perhaps you're seeing this theme, and some of this, again, is also informed by the way I do business, of being really based in relationships and connecting with people, and that your about page is such a strong opportunity to connect with somebody, and so being able to conversationally connect with them as opposed to this sort of like distanced third party connection that you're talking directly like, I am, here's who I am, here's what I'm passionate about, here's what I do, and then too, I'd love to see a photo of you, because then that's just going to help to cement the memorability and that connection that we see people and then that helps us feel much more connected and then here into contact great job with the email address right here i would include did you include anywhere born and raised in japan lived and work in england moved to oh we knew southern california i so i had forgotten that from the home page you'd had southern california here is it in the other oh it's already in the other pages great i just kind of became unaware of it <laughs> by the time i got to contact. So that's great. We know where you're located. We've got your email address. Contact form though also available if somebody wants to use that. There is the Instagrams. The thing I love about your website though is very clean, very simple, easy to navigate. I think again, you know, from the standpoint of usability and user experience, you definitely have that going on. So I think really the opportunity at this point is just to really kind of dial in and curate those galleries, really focusing in on who is your target client. But thank you so much for sharing this with us. Holy moly though, we just made it through five websites and I went a little more in depth than maybe I originally intended to, but I didn't want to shortchange you. So hopefully those folks who got critiqued as well as you, if your website wasn't critiqued, my real sincere hope is that this has given you some new ideas, tweaks to make to your website. Certainly any questions, we've got the comment section below. But with that, I hope you have a fantastic day. You stay out of trouble and I'll see you soon, okay? Bye.